Hello and welcome to Pots and Trowels, which is brought to you with the support of Mr. Fothergill Seed and Cobra Garden. Today I'm going to be sprucing up the rhubarb and giving you some tips for watering in the garden. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trowels. Uh, I've got the mower out, I'm not actually doing much grass cutting at the moment because we've had such a long time of dry, hot weather. The grass has really slowed down and in some places it's looking a bit yellow in fact. Um, what I'm using the mower for at the moment is just to suck up the leaves because the weather over the last week has turned much cooler, we've had some wind and we've had a few showers and as a result lots of leaves, especially the evergreens, have blown off and are littering the lawn. So I'm using the mower as a bit of a, a hoover to clean things up at the moment. Even though it's cooler and we've had a bit of rain, the ground is still very dry. Uh, the surface might look moist, but in our soil, certainly, it's only gone down about an inch. And if I just dig a, a hole there and go down, you can see that the soil there is absolutely bone dry. So we need lots more rain. So what we're going to do today is just have a look at ways you can water to keep your plants healthy in the garden. When the ground is dry, it's not always practical to water your garden. A, it's expensive if you're on a meter, it's a waste of water. And if you've got a big garden, you're going to be watering all the time. So sometimes you've just got to make the plants work a little bit for that water and search for it. But what is important is if you've got any newly planted trees, shrubs, perennials, whatever, you do give them plenty of water to help the roots get established. Um, and this bed here has had a bit of a revamp over the last few weeks. Uh, some of the shrubs weren't doing very well and were getting too big, so I grubbed those out and I've planted some new bits in amongst the established. So what I will be doing with these is making sure they get a watering. Now, I'm not one for watering every day. As I said, I want the roots to work for it. So I tend to water probably twice a week um, and I'm just going to water the soil around the roots. And I always put in a little bit of seaweed fertiliser. That is really good. It feeds the plants but it encourages root growth which is what we want. So this is a cistus that's been planted in, only been in a couple of weeks. It's got a few yellow leaves but that's nothing to worry about. And what I'm going to do is make sure that it gets a good soak around the base where the pot was basically. We need to make sure that that soil immediately around the roots is kept moist and if you give it a good soak then the moisture goes down into the soil and the roots will follow it and only when it starts to dry out will I water that again. So we don't need to water all the soil, we're just concentrating on that circle around the roots. And it's a similar thing with trees which we'll go and have a look at now. Don't just think about plants that have only gone in in the last couple of months or so that need watering. Sometimes trees and shrubs that you planted one or two years ago might be struggling in dry weather. And this is a liquid amber Styracifluor whirlpuston. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's worth growing because it has a wonderful autumn colour, a really good specimen tree. And normally by this time of the year in June, it would have much more foliage on it. So I know it's been struggling a little bit. So I'm going to give this a really good soaking to try and give it a boost. So what I've already done is to scrape away some of the soil just around the base of the trunk there to basically create a shallow depression a bit like a saucer shape so that will hold the water in there and it won't run away because it's on a bit of a slope. Sometimes also when the ground is dry you probably notice yourself you put water on and it just doesn't soak in it just sits on the surface and that's because the soil gets so dry it can't soak it in it's known as hydrophobic and a little tip to get round that is just to put a little bit of washing up liquid you only need a little squirt into a can of water and that helps the water to soak in a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is just fill that up now with water. Um, I'm going to put the best part of this can in, a gallon and a half, two gallons is absolutely fine and that will soak all the way down to the roots and moisten the root ball and hopefully keep it going and encourage some nice new growth. But we've got one final tip I want to show you on another tree just over in another part of the garden. Finally, when do you water? Well, if it's a warm sunny day, try to water early morning or late evening. 
so that the water doesn't evaporate and it can go down to where the plants need it. Or if it's a cool day like today and overcast, then you can water any time because you know, the water will go down and it won't dry out. This is another tree I planted just over a year ago. This is an Amelanchier obelisk, which is a lovely upright tree with white blossom in the spring and lovely autumn color. Ideal for a small garden because it never gets much wider than about a meter and it doesn't get too tall. I've already given this a really good soak in a few days ago, uh, a couple of gallons of water around just like the other tree, but then to seal in that moisture and stop it drying up, what I've done is I've put around it some of our homemade garden compost, but you could put bark around it, you could put a plant fabric around it, anything to seal in the moisture. And if I just delve underneath there and get a handful of that soil, you can see that it's lovely and dry. The worms are in there as well. So that will really help the tree and get it through any dry weather we're gonna get later on in the summer. If you're like me and you like your rhubarb crumble and your rhubarb fall, you've probably got a clump of rhubarb in your garden. And of course, at this time of the year, it's in full production and you'll be pulling these lovely big thick sticks of rhubarb that you can enjoy. What we do is we cut the leaves off. We can't eat those. They go on the compost heap. Even though they're poisonous, they rot down to harmless substances. And then we can enjoy these in the kitchen. Now, rhubarb originally comes from the Siberia region where it likes the cold, which is fine, but it also needs moisture and it grows by streams and riversides. Now, when we grow it in a garden where the soil dries out, it, it in effect makes an umbrella and the rain can't get down very well to the roots. So what we've got to do is to make sure we water it and feed it so it keeps producing more rhubarb. So you can, if you want, use a granular feed, uh, anything, poultry pellets, blood fish and bone, grow more is idea, or you could give it a liquid feed of some form. And what you need to do basically, and I do mine on a weekly basis because this soil dries out, is give it a can of water with feed in it all the way around the base so that I'm absolutely giving it a soak in. That will drain away and keep the soil nice and moist right the way through the summer. And then we're gonna get these lovely new sticks forming in the middle to keep us going for at least another couple of months. Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trowels. And as well as watching it on Facebook, if you want to look at all the back programs that we've done going back to last August, it's free to subscribe on YouTube where you can watch them. Next time, I'm gonna be planting out leeks and tying in and side shooting tomatoes. We'll see you then, bye.